which, which is, yeah, it, it was a pair of handles like this. When you squeeze them together, it stretched out, and, and you grab your fingers on that. Every basement had a um, metal uh, bushel basket, and you hauled it out to the alley, and the alley was literally paved. out anymore. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to Prince of Peace and I'd like to welcome those who are at home watching us on Facebook. Um, just a couple of announcements for this morning. The worship team will uh, meet tomorrow, uh, that's the 25th, at 3 p.m. So tomorrow, 3 o'clock. And uh, the only other announcement I have then is uh, that Larry Donmeyer uh, this Friday departed this life and entered into life eternal. Uh, there will be a funeral uh, here at the church sometime this week, but we don't know yet. Uh, the family is, as a matter of fact, right now uh, discussing that with the funeral director. So we, we don't have the details on that yet, but we'll get them out as soon as we can. And that's all that I have for announcements. So I'll ask if there's any announcements or concerns from the congregation. If not, then we have... Good morning. First of all, I want to thank Carol for that lovely prelude. I uh, enjoy the songs from With One Voice, and I was sort of moving along with the music this morning. It was wonderful. Thank you, Carol. I'm reporting. You can hear me now? I have to talk to Pete about that one. Yoo -hoo. Can you hear me? I can talk real loud, as I do with my grandchildren most generally. <laughs> I 
think they're working on it. I just will. <laughs> I will lower my voice. The pandemic task force met this last week, and due to some of the relaxing uh, guidelines by our county and by our state, uh, we've decided to relax some of the uh, restrictions we've had within our church since the pandemic started. Um, one of the things you probably already noticed is that the uh, alternate, alternating pews are no longer marked. The blue and, and green uh, circles have been removed. And I do want you to know that uh, I've heard lots of comments already about, I don't know where to sit now. <laughs> We've become such creatures of habit. I also want to tell you that my grandchildren had great fun removing those from the pews. <laughs> but if you see any pieces of scotch tape, please feel free to remove them. We're also going to start uh, resuming coffee uh, before and after services. And for some of you, that probably doesn't make a difference. But for us coffee drinkers, it does. Uh, more and more, we're gathering in the narthex and visiting, and, and it's been wonderful. Uh, so we're just going to add coffee. Now, none of these changes are going to happen overnight. It'll be gradual, but we just want to let you know that things are beginning to happen. Uh, there's also going to be um, a return of the choir, hopefully, if we have enough interest. We're also going to have a uh, begin communion at the altar rail. Uh, the worship team is going to be meeting tomorrow, as Pastor mentioned, and uh, they will be discussing this more as we go along. But we are also going to continue to offer communion in the pew like we've been doing because we recognize that some people will still not be comfortable coming to the rail. So just know that the options will be continuing to be there. We're also going to resume some activities, hopefully some potlucks, uh, group events. We're going to uh, lift the restrictions for fellowship hall. But again, we're hoping that people, if uh, a potluck is planned or a group activity, that they still recognize that there are people that are not comfortable going into a large uh, a group, a room with a large group of people and to have those options available for people, um, you know, spread out in the narthex or in the conference room or some other uh, way of spreading out a little bit. But we want people to be comfortable here and feel safe here. Um, we recognize that there are people in our congregation that continue to have uh, side effects, uh, ill effects from having um, COVID. Uh, we recognize that there are people with uh, uh, medical conditions that uh, are in danger uh, if they should ha act, uh, get COVID. So we want you to recognize that uh, we are not mandating a uh, mask but they are optional for people that care to wear them. We are also encouraging um, social distancing because there are people that just do not feel comfortable being close. So if you sit down next to somebody and that person all of a sudden gets up and moves someplace else, please respect their wishes. Uh, don't uh, frown on them. Each one of us has a right to make our own decisions and what we can do to keep ourselves safe and to keep our Prince of Peace family safe. Um, when we started making these decisions on behalf of the congregation, that was our primary goal, was to keep everyone safe, keep everyone healthy. Um, now as we move forward, just remember uh, the state and Stevenson County still has a high risk of transmission. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we uh, move forward. We still want to keep everyone safe and healthy in our congregation. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Almost forgot. If you have any questions or concerns, please talk to one of the members of the pandemic committee, uh, Carol Johnson, Susie Dvorak, Paul Everdeen, George Jarzak, or myself, or bring your concerns to the council. Thank you. As far as distancing is concerned, uh, what I always encourage people is use common sense. But then one of our American wits once asked, what's so common about common sense? So, uh, we just have to worry about that. The other thing that I uh, wanted to mention was the uh, music from With One Voice. Uh, the last hymn for today is a test of how Lutheran you are. Uh, 
I've been told, particularly by Baptists and Pentecostal types, that Lutherans are the only people who can sing stand up, stand up for Jesus while they're sitting down. Uh, we, we are people known for not moving. Uh, this, this last song, if you can go through it without moving something, uh, you're definitely a, a died in the world Lutheran. That said, let us now continue our service of worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we take the big breath of pain. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are free to love as God loves.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the 18th chapter of Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin! I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. <laughs> Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I, who am, who am but dust and ashes, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, 
Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. <clears throat> he answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading responsively Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, and they have heard the words of our mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, and it cares for the low, receiving the honey from the fire. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good for a purpose for me. You will lie. Steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of our hand. The second reading is from the second chapter of Colossians. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not any, let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up with out cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head from which the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows with a growth that is from god the word of the lord thanks be to god
gospel for this day is taken from the gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you? If your child asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Because we established this mic is on, right? Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm sure you guys have all heard of knock knock jokes, and you know how they go. I say knock knock, you say thank you. I say boo, you say why are you crying? I know. And then everyone rolls their eyes. Um, there are, they go on forever. Knock, knock. Yeah. Tank. You're welcome. One more. Knock, knock. Yeah. Orange. Yeah. Orange, you glad this is the last one. Anyway, in the reading that Pastor Lay just read, and also in the first reading that Mr. Brockman read, um, the Bible tells about a time that Jesus was talking about knocking. Knock, knock. Um, one day, Jesus was teaching his friends, the disciples, how to pray. He said, he said let's say you went to a friend's house late at night, um, and you knocked on the door, and you said to your friend, I need to borrow some bread. Uh, one of my friends stopped by unexpectedly, and I don't have anything to feed them. Well, and the friend says, I'm in bed. My family's in bed. I'm not getting up. But what if you kept knocking on the door till the other neighbors heard you knocking on the door? Eventually, your friend might get up and give you some bread. Jesus told this story to his friends and to us to knock on God's door by asking for what you need. He says, everyone who asks will be heard. Everyone who looks will find what he's looking for, and everyone who knocks will have the door open for him. God is always happy to hear from us, which is why Jesus taught his disciples to pray. You can pray to God yourself 
You don't need an adult. You don't need the pastor to pray. You get to talk to God anytime you want, about anything you want, and God listens. You can talk to God about all kinds of things, food, God's peace, things you're afraid of, forgiveness, or help for a friend. We may not always hear an answer right away, but we know that God promises to hear us. Sometimes we hear God's answer through other people or through reading the Bible or all kinds of ways. Sometimes, Jesus says, we have to look in lots of places to find God and God's answer for us. Jesus said prayer is a way to ask, seek, and knock, and he even taught his disciples a way to pray. We call this the Lord's Prayer, and we will pray it together later on in the service. But let's pray now, and I'm going to pray in a way that God taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. From the good news according to Luke, and forgive us our sins as we forgive anyone indebted to us. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today we have before us, quote the Lord's Prayer. Um, when the new hymnals came out, with the uh, more contemporary wording in there, um, there were some people who got fairly upset about it. Uh, I had uh, one person in Oregon that said he wouldn't come back to church if we used this other uh, wording. He said, that isn't the real Lord's Prayer, which means that isn't the wording that I memorized when I was in confirmation class 50 or 60 years ago. Uh, when the new hymnal was being uh, put together, they sent out samples to, to some pastors uh, asking for their feedback. Uh, when I got mine and I looked at it, uh, I answered them by saying that I really felt that they should either pick one or the other of the wordings for the Lord's Prayer and print only that one. Uh, otherwise, we'll have some doing this and some doing that, and we won't be able to pray even this most basic part of our worship together. And if you look in the red hymnal on uh, page 112 and other places in there, you'll see they didn't take my advice. They, uh, they, they put them both in there and we do have that problem. Now I find when I'm praying the Lord's Prayer, I have to read it because I'm not sure which version is going to be used by that congregation. Actually, though, if we wanted to pray the Lord's Prayer just the way that Jesus said it, first off, we'd have to learn Aramaic. Uh, that's a Hebrew dialect, but uh, that was the language that Jesus spoke. And you have to remember then, any time we translate anything, if it's not Aramaic, we're actually trying to guess what the author was trying to say. And a real good example of this, uh, Old English and Old German both came from the same root source. So essentially they're the same language that just kind of grew out uh, together. But even with that, we can't translate German directly into English. Um, one example I like to give all the time, the kids particularly like this one, uh, it's, uh, if we read uh, in German, Volkenkatze, we translate that when we put that into English as skyscraper. But if we translate skyscraper back into German, it sounds really ridiculous. 
um, skyscraper. Sounds foolish. But if we translate Wolkenkratzer from the German, uh, exactly as it said, Vulcan are clouds. And the Kratz is, is to, to scratch, to, to get at what itches. So in German, it's a cloud scratcher. Uh, that sounds silly to us, but skyscraper sounds silly to, to German speakers. So you can't translate exactly what it says. You have to translate what you're pretty sure the author meant to say. And take my word for it, skyscraper does sound silly in German. Uh, the most varied translation, though, of any of the words uh, in our Lord's Prayer, and we have a double translation in it in the, uh, the prayer that we had this morning. Uh, trespasses or debts or sin. Uh, how you translate it, I think, probably depends on whether you're a, a landowner and you're worried about somebody trespassing or you're a banker and you're worried about somebody uh, being in debt to you or, or just someone who's been hurt and, and you're worrying about sins. When I was uh, teaching confirmation class before this uh, red hymnal came out, the latest or the burgundy as they like to call it, it's still red to me. The, uh, I used to ask the kids, where in the scriptures can we find the version of the Lord's Prayer that we use in worship? It was a trick question because it's not in the scriptures. The, the version we use, at least, isn't in there of uh, that way. We've added to it and we've moved some of the wording around. And the thy and thou is strictly Jamesian English and we don't use that at all. But you see, I'm convinced that Jesus never intended for us to say the same words over and over again for more than 2,000 years. One of the problems with that, you see, is that when you say the same words over and over, and this is something that they had us do in an uh, in English class uh, in high school, uh, pick a word, any word, say it over to yourself 40, 50 times. And what happens is it stops having any meaning. It, it's just a sound that you're making, and not a word anymore. Uh, an example that's been made into a joke, but it actually happens, is people singing our national anthem, and they've heard people say, Jose, can you see? And I have actually, I have actually heard people saying the Lord's Prayer saying, hallowed be thy name. Uh, it's a sound. We, we don't even pay attention to what the word supposedly means. When teaching his disciples how to pray, one translation says that Jesus said to them, pray like this. Another one says, pray in this way. Uh, the one that we have with us this morning says, say these words. But... Uh, I, I really believe that what Jesus gave us was a formula, an introduction, um, seven petitions, and a doxology. It's just like writing a letter. Uh, there are some of us here old enough to remember doing that. Uh, people don't write letters anymore. But when you start a letter, you start it with who it's for. Something like, dear sir or madam, or hey Mike, or our father, who is in heaven. It's just who it's for. Then Jesus puts in the petitions, and that's a list of things that we're asking for. Uh, the number of these varies from translation to translation, but uh, the prayer that we were using in the uh, old hymnal had seven. Um, depends on also the time in history that it was translated. But the one that we have in today's gospel lesson has five petitions. We ask for what it is that we want. We want your kingdom to come. 
We want your will to be done. We want our daily bread. Um, and that can be taken in a lot of different ways. We want forgiveness for the things that we've done wrong. Freedom from temptation. We don't want to be tempted to fall back into the stuff that we've just been forgiven for. All of the things that we want, we, we have in this particular section. And then we finish with a doxology, a, a praising of God, which the version that we have in today's gospel lesson does not have at all. We finish as we do most prayers with the Hebrew word that means uh, so be it, or right on. Uh, amen doesn't mean goodbye or I'm finished praying now. It means I agree. That's what amen means. I agree with what has just been said. The predominantly black congregations have got this down right. Uh, they use amen often. Uh, and if they give you an amen while you're preaching, that's good. That means they agree with what you're saying. They're, they're backing you up. If they call out, Lord, help him, that's, that, that's not so good. They're not agreeing with what you're saying. So, But it is very gratifying to preach to congregations that answer you back, that, that tell you they're listening because they say things to you. As long as, as, long as they agree, it's very gratifying. <laughs> Now, much of what I'm about to say, I think that I've said here before, but you'll have to bear with me because I'm going to say it again. When praying, we often fold our hands. Now, that's primarily to keep us from fiddling with things while we're praying because we do tend to be, I have one son that I swear can't talk unless his hands are moving, doing something. So we fold our hands customarily, not because it has anything to do with prayer. It has to do with involving our hands so that they're not off doing something else. Often we close our eyes. That's to keep us from, what was that? Uh, keep us from getting distracted by whatever else is going on around us. So the folding of the hands and the closing of the eyes is nothing spiritual. It just helps us to concentrate more on God and on what we're saying. My best example of prayer, oh, I also want to mention something else about prayer that you may have noticed or may not. Uh, when a person is leading worship, uh, traditionally, their palms of their hands are facing the congregation when they're speaking to the congregation. So when I come up here and I say, let us pray, my hands, I'm saying that to the congregation. And then when we pray, they turn the palms of their hands towards heaven. So if you see my hands moving up here, that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's a tradition. But my best example for how to pray, and I'm asked uh, an amazing amount of time to people who want me to tell them how to pray. And my best example is Tevya from Fiddler on the Roof. He goes about his life talking to his good friend, God. He, he walks pulling his cart because his horse is lame. And he grumbles about the horse being lame to God. He's in prayer. He feeds his chickens in the barn. And he complains to God how much better life would be for him. And I, I thought this was really interesting. And also how much better it would be for God. Uh, because then Tevye could worship more and read more of the holy books if he were a wealthy man. Uh, he gives consent to his daughter to marry a, a poor tailor after he's already given consent for her to marry a rich butcher. And now he plans with God how to lie to his wife and to the rest of the village to get out of the, the agreement that he already made. So not everything he prays to God about is with him being on the right side of morality. Uh, he asks God to help him weasel out of a thing. 
He doesn't pray to God in the way that so many of us think about prayer. He talks to a friend. Uh, he also prays when, when Tevye prays at the table on the Sabbath. He prays much more in the way that we think of prayer. But he prays while he's working. He prays fervently while he's sitting on a bench, watching a train pull out, taking his daughter away. But always, Tevye is praying to a God that he knows personally, a God who is his friend and who he trusts. There, there's a, a, a trusting in this kind of prayer that's amazing. From our first lesson, Abraham is talking to God, and he says to him, would, would you take 995? Uh, uh, if you'll do that, how about 875? We can work this out. Uh, you have to really be comfortable with God to negotiate like that. Okay, God, you told me this is all right. How about if we go a little further and get a little deeper into it? God wants what he has in Tevye and what he has in Abraham. God wants a relationship with us. How should we pray? We should pray as if we're talking to someone whom we know and trust. God wants to hear from us when we're celebrating as well as when we're afraid or in need or worshiping. Got together with most of my family last night we were celebrating. We prayed to God at the meal. God would love to hear a joke from us. Uh, we heard a few this morning. Uh, God already knows the joke, but wants to hear it from us, from his friend. We cry with God often. We don't laugh with God often enough, I think. Lord, Teach us how to pray. Well, first, talk as if you're talking to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Now let us join together in confessing our Christian faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, embolden church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel, and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislatures and public officials that they advocate for the well being of those they serve. Merciful God. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer especially Becky, Elizabeth, Joey, BJ, Mike, Gail, Keith, Larry, Roberta, Sylvia, Jim, and Dana, and those we name now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, trouble and sorrow, in your holy name. Merciful God. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us show signs of that peace to one another.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to all present, saying, All of you eat of this. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of this. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Christ until he comes again in glory. And in the assurance that Christ is with us in this meal, let us now pray together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is a fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the God of peace, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Yes, amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.